describe it's it? It's a seaside. A seaside. Mm -hmm. White sand. Lots of trees. And greenery. Mm -hmm. Look around it. What else do you see? A cave. Mm -hmm. Where is this cave? To the right. Mm -hmm. Is this cave big enough to go into? Yes. Let's find out what's in this cave. Allow yourself to walk towards that cave and describe everything that you see. See the water coming up close to the entrance of the cave? Mm -hmm. And I have to walk around on the rocks mm -hmm. to get into the cave. Mm -hmm. And it's a deep cave. Can you see what's inside this cave? I just see rocks. Mm -hmm. So let's find out a little bit about this cave. I'd like for you to use a light source to illuminate this cave and begin going deeper into it. The deeper you go into this cave, the deeper you'll be able to expand into this hypnosis. Feel yourself going deeper and deeper in consciousness and connecting with what's inside the cave. And describe it for me. I'm just in the cave mm -hmm. and I just see the sea mm -hmm. and out from the outside hole of the cave. Mm -hmm. And it's moist and a little cool inside. Mm -hmm. What does it feel like to be inside this cave? like a fun little hideout. Mm -hmm. Does the cave go any deeper? Do you see any passageways? No. All right. So let's see where you go to next. I'd like for you to close that scene and let's go now traveling through time and space to another place and another time that has information for you. Allow yourself to be there now. Trust your first impression. What do you see? It's the first thing that comes into your mind. Hmm. Empty space. Very good. So empty space is a good thing, because when we're in space, we're able to travel. So I'd like for you to focus on this empty space. And even if you're in an empty space, there's always something there, as long as you focus. So let's find out about this empty space. And as you focus on it, tell me if this empty space feels like it would be inside or outside. What does it feel like? Use your senses. Feels like outside. Mm -hmm. Very good. And even if you're outside, with your eyes closed, you can tell if it's daytime or nighttime. What would this empty space be? Would it be indoors or outdoors or daytime or nighttime? Feels like dark. Dark. Empty space. Okay. Very good. Now notice this empty space and see if it has any type of movement or anything physical in it. Use your other senses. Stars. Stars. Mm-hmm. 
So focus on them and see if there are any stars that call to your attention. How does it feel? Uh, void. Void. Mm -hmm. So let's go traveling through that void. Use your consciousness to travel because in a void you usually don't have a body. So I'd like for you to propel yourself through this void and let's find out where it is that you're from. Allow yourself to be propelled and let's go exploring. What's the first thing that comes to your mind? I keep wanting to say Pleiades. Mm -hmm. but... Oh, don't stop yourself. Allow yourself to be there now. What's the first thing that you feel or see? Use your senses. Allow the images to flow. Remember, the more that you talk, the more you'll see. I don't see anything. Mm -hmm. So then we're going to be using our senses. Let's switch off the visualization and just use your senses as if you're going through a room blindfolded. Allow the images in your mind's eye to be senses. What do you sense this place is like? Peaceful. Peaceful. Very good. So let's continue. What do you imagine this place to feel like? Um, very harmonious, mm -hmm. and uplifting. Mm -hmm. So how could you imagine this peaceful, harmonious place? What do you think it would look like? Use the imagination. What would a place like this look like? What would you look like? I don't know. I feel like I'm just making it up. Mm -hmm. All um, we're doing is allowing you to warm up your imagination. Just allow yourself to go with the flow. And the more your imagination is used, the more you'll be able to get information. This is a journey, not a test. Just have fun with it. Um, imagine it being bright mm -hmm. and where would the people live in this place? What would you imagine it to look like? Just allow the images to pop in. Like structures that are like round or pyramidal. Mm -hmm. um, that are more 
sustainable and in connection with the nature. Mm -hmm. So allow yourself now to be in a place where it would be sustainable with nature. Allow yourself to close the scene and open up a scene where you would be living in this place sustainable with nature. What would it look like? Look around. Use all of your senses. What would it smell like? What would it sound like? Mm. What's the first thing that pops into your mind? Fresh, fresh air. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. The smell of, like, greenery. Mm Mm-hmm. What kind of greenery do you see around you? Trees and Mm -hmm. grass. Mm Mm-hmm. Is there anything interesting about these trees in this place and grass? Any difference? Focus on the trees. Connect with them. Mind to mind and heart to heart. What do you feel from the trees? They're steady and giving life. Mm hmm. Do they have any advice for you? To stay rooted. Mm Mm-hmm. Very good. So let's look around and see what else is there. What else do you imagine is there? Look all around you. What does it feel like? Like, um, it's like a nice, peaceful place Mm -hmm. where people are living in community. Mm -hmm. Very good. So while you're there, I'd like for you to focus on yourself and see what it is that you look like when you're in a place like this. Look down at your feet. What do your feet look like? What do you imagine them to be like? Like it's normal feet. Mm-hmm. Maybe blue. What is it? Maybe blue. Blue feet? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So let's keep looking at the rest of your body. What does it look like? Are you male or female? I think I'm female. Mm-hmm. Imagine if you had a spiritual mirror in front of you and you could look at yourself. What would you look like? What do you see yourself looking like in this place? A tall blue being. Mm-hmm. What are your features like? They're like long. Long? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Look, at, look at your hands. What do they look like? Like 
long fingers. Mm -hmm. How many fingers do you have? Not sure. Not really um, seeing in that much detail. Mm -hmm. When you can't see the details, just know it. You'll be able to just know, being that these are your hands, you know. You'll know the information, so just allow it to just flow out. The first thing that comes into your mind. You'll just know the answers. So in this place, where you're very tall with these features, what is it that you do there? What do you see yourself or know that you do? Watch over the people. Mm -hmm. You watch over the people. In what capacity? What do you do to watch over them? Like provide counsel. Mm-hmm. Provide counsel. Very good. So while you're in this place right now, what do you imagine it is that you're doing in this place? What are you overseeing now? You'll just know the answer. Like a communication with another group? Mm hmm So let's find out what it is that you're communicating and who these other groups of people are. So allow yourself now to see yourself in this role. Who are these others? From another star system? Mm -hmm. What do they look like? I don't know. How is it that you communicate with them? Do you talk? I guess. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Maybe even telepathically. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's close this scene now. And let's go to a scene where you are doing what you do in that lifetime. Where you're providing counsel. Be there now. And tell me, what is this place? What's the first thing that comes into your mind? Look around. Like a... Um office building, mm -hmm. but it's like clear, you can see through it. Mm -hmm. Tell me more. Mm. It feels very clean and bright and sterile. Mm -hmm. And where do you do your work? In, this, in an office. Mm -hmm. She'll be there now and tell me what this office looks like. It's win windows. It's all clear. Like you can see outside. Mm -hmm. And there'd be some seating areas. Mm -hmm. Now as you look at your office and the place where you work, I want you to now get the feel of what it is that you do, and tell me if you like what you do. How does it feel like to you? It feels purposeful. Mm-hmm. 
So allow yourself now to be in counsel with somebody else. And tell me what happens. What do you see or sense? Someone's come to me for advice mm-hmm. or counsel. Mm-hmm. Mm. What do they look like? Like me. Mm-hmm. And What are you counseling them on? Maybe their their purpose or mission. Mm-hmm. And in this position, do you feel that you are young or old? How do you feel? What age do you feel you are? Hmm. Like a like a grown um, adult, mm-hmm. maybe I don't know, forties or fifties. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good. So, what happens next? walk out and meet some people. Mm-hmm. Tell me more. Mm. What's the purpose of these people? This meeting? We just all, all work in the same kind of area. Mm-hmm. And in the same place. Mm -hmm. When you're at work, do you have any type of outfit on? Any attire? Take a look at the clothing. Maybe like white Mm -hmm. clothes. White clothes? Are these clothes close to the body? Or they're flowing. What do they look yeah, like? Yeah, they're light material. Mm-hmm. Kind of flowy. Mm-hmm. Good. Do you wear anything on your head? Mm. Not that I can sense. Okay, very good. So let's find out now. A scene where it impacts your life. I'd like for you to close that scene and let's go to a scene that impacts your life in that lifetime. Be there now. What's happening? Where are you? Look all around. What's the first thing that comes into your mind? My home. Mm Mm-hmm. All right. Let's find out. Tell me more about your home. (sighs) What's happening there? Maybe I am a man. Mm hmm. A male. Mm hmm. Tell me more. Because I feel responsible for everybody. Mm hmm. Maybe 
My partner had children. We had children. Mm -hmm. Tell me what's happening there in your home. Mm. What do you feel? The more you talk, the more you'll see. What are you feeling? I'm feeling happy to be home, grateful to have this space. Mm -hmm. um, to come back to. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you've been gone for a while? Maybe. Mm -hmm. But I feel my eyes are tearing up like I was relieved to be back. Mm -hmm. So let's find out where it is that you went to. Let's find out what this journey was that you're so happy to be back to. I'd like for you to close that scene and go back in time to find out what you were doing to be so happy to be back from. Be there now. Where are you? Mm. What do you see? I guess I'm on Earth. Mm-hmm. Tell me more. And I just am noticing the how much uh, light that needs to come in to help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's very dense. Mm -hmm. Are you on a mission to Earth? Maybe. Mm -hmm. Let's find out how you arrived on Earth. What did you use to arrive there? Did you visit it or were you in a body? Maybe I just visited. Mm -hmm. So let's find out what you were doing on Earth, what you needed to do. I think it's also waking other people up to their mission. Mm -hmm. The same thing I do, but here, because mm -hmm. we need the people with the light to to wake up to their light. Mm -hmm. So tell me more about your your mission on Earth. Where did you appear? Look around you. Are you on the planet or looking at the planet? I feel like I'm not like physically on it, mm -hmm. but like um, around it. Okay. And um, so let's find out in what way you're around the earth. I guess my consciousness. Okay. Mm -hmm. So take a look at the earth and see what it looks like from your perspective. The sky is beautiful. Mm -hmm. So connect with Gaia and let's find out why you're there. Did she call you? Mm -hmm. Tell me more.
We just need to love the earth and take care of it. Mm -hmm. How do we do that? Being mindful of how we walk on it. Not depleting by giving back to her and all she gives to us. Mm -hmm. Can you connect with her? Can you connect with her consciousness? She's really joyous. Mm -hmm. But... She's joyous when we love her. Mm -hmm. And she's really taking care of us. But we have to also take care of her. In what way? <sighs> what does Gaia want us to do? Ask her to give you a visual. To live in harmony again. Mm -hmm. Create stone structures that uh, produce some energy. Mm -hmm. We need free energy. Mm -hmm. And these stone structures will do it? They... The... The, the, in certain ways in which they're, they can be built mm -hmm. to funnel energy. Mm -hmm. Is Gaia giving you a visual of what these structures would look like? There's some circular mm -hmm. and pyramid, pyramid type. Um, and the circles can connect with the other circles, creating a grid on the earth. How big are these structures? They're like the size of a, maybe, I mean, they can be bigger, but we can build like the size of homes, but in these circular stone structures. Mm -hmm. These structures, would they be standing on their own, or would people be living in these structures? You can live in them. Okay, so actually our homes could be structures of energy? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And where does this energy come from? Come from both inside the earth mm -hmm. and from above, so we're connecting both. Mm -hmm. Now, does anything else is anything else required besides just the stone? Do we need crystals? Do we need anything else? The stones have crystals okay. within them. Um, And um, so you can also vib create vibrational frequencies within the stone by like tapping the stones together. Mm -hmm. And it creates, all of them start to vibrate at that tonal frequency. Mm. Is this something that Gaia wants, to, wants us to work on right away? Yes. Um, there are certain areas on the earth where these have existed from ancient times mm -hmm. when people were more connected to to the earth. Mm -hmm. <sighs> and it's in, the, f the free energy is important not only for our life here but for the life of Gaia. How can free energy help Gaia? That we won't be abusing her resources mm -hmm. to produce energy, and really the system is just uh, has everyone enslaved to them, mm -hmm. and 
to be free, we need to escape that program. Mm -hmm. So will Gaia assist us with this information? She always has been, we just haven't been listening. Mm -hmm. So can Gaia give Carla this information? Can she download this information to where she can know with all of her being how to do this? Mm. Carla's not so technical. Mm, I see. So she may not be able to implement all of this physically here, mm -hmm. but the awareness, the awareness and the mindfulness and the consciousness of it. Okay, very good. So if Carla didn't come here to, to create these structures, what is her purpose here? Why did she come here this time? What was her mission? To raise the vibration. Mm -hmm. Did she come from the Pleiades? Like she was shown. So can you explain a little bit about why she felt so sad when she went back. Relieved to be back. Mm -hmm. Is this her lifetime now that she's going to be coming back from? Mm. Or was it a different lifetime? It's happening simultaneously. Okay, good. So her family is there waiting for her? Mm hmm Okay, good. So her, her mission here is to awaken people. How can she do this? How can she awaken and serve at the same time? By reminding people of their divinity. Mm-hmm of their true nature, of union, harmony, and oneness. Mm -hmm. Does she do this all the time? Or through work? How does she do that? Through her work, she reminds people to come back inside mm -hmm. and to remember that mm -hmm. inside is their true nature and not, not the external reality, but the, the internal, the love within them. Is this something that she should be focusing on? Developing this intuition? Should she be channeling more of this information? Yes, she, she can be channeling. Um, she already is channeling. She is. She just thinks it needs to look a certain way. Mm. So in what way is Carla channeling? What does it look like when someone sees her channeling? When she offers love in the face of conflict. Mm -hmm. When she's leading all these bodies in yoga class. Mm -hmm and offering softness and ease rather than tension and gripping on mm -hmm. and letting go. Now, she also wants to develop her intuition a lot more. How can she do that? already very intuitive. Mm -hmm. She just needs to trust in her intuition. Okay. And offer offer people the opportunity to 
connect with her intuition. Mm -hmm. Okay. She told me that she was on the beach not too long ago where she went into a trance just listening to the ocean and something happened. She got some sort of teaching about how to do Reiki. Can you tell her what that's all about? From the Council of Light? Mm. Is she part of that council? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so what were they telling her? She was wondering how to do Reiki and how to heal people and heal herself. Mm -hmm. And she had been wondering about it for a long time. And the energies had aligned on that day to be able to bring in the information mm -hmm. and to attune her to the universal energy of healing. She needs to work with people's bodies and heal their bodies. Okay, so is that her, her main purpose? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, she also said that she got some information about Lemuria. What is the Lemurian connection with her? The Lemurian consciousness mm -hmm. of harmony is something that she needs to bring here now connecting back to the earth, connecting mm -hmm. back to sustainable communities. Mm -hmm. Is that why she was in Hawaii for those few months? Mm. Was she getting back to that connection? She was reactivating that connection. Okay. So by her being there, she was activating something? Mm -hmm, because of the energy there. Okay. Is she supposed to be going back to Hawaii or somewhere else? She does love it there. Mm -hmm. mm. It's too isolated. Okay, she needs to be with people. Okay. So she was there, she did what she needed to do to activate that. Mm -hmm. She can go back and enjoy being there in that energy of harmony with mm -hmm. the earth and mm -hmm. the raw magnetic energy that comes out from there is good for her. Good. Well. She was wondering where would be the best place for her to live. Is it safe, for example, to be near the water at this time? She knows the waters are rising. Mm -hmm. And... That weighs heavily on her mm -hmm. mind. Mm -hmm. For for now, it's okay. Mm -hmm. But in the future, it's smart to look for a place that can be self-sustainable. Okay. Away from the water. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just because there's, with the changes, there's going to be a lot of changes. <laughs> um, changes physically to the land? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, where she's living right now on Miami Beach? She had a dream last year mm -hmm. of all of Miami kind of collapsing. Mm -hmm. And she thought it was just her imagination. Mm -hmm. What was that dream all about? It's the foundation of the city isn't strong. Mm -hmm. So if anything were to come in water-wise, it wouldn't really be able to handle it in the way it is now. Okay, good. So when will she know when the best time is for her to leave the Miami area? She 
She will be told. She will be. She will okay. be told and she will feel it. Okay. She will go. Good. Well, I hope they tell me too. <laughs> what about her connection with her guides? She wants to connect with them and any multidimensional beings related to this life. How can we connect her with those? She wants to be consciously connected mm -hmm. and but she always is connected to she, them. She is. How many guides are working with her at this time? Hmm. I guess many. Many. Are these guides earthly guides? Are these guides from the Pleiades? Are these guides from the Council of Light? What consists of her guide team? They are beings of light. Beings of light, okay. Now, is she one of these beings of light? Because when she started out, she was in a void. What was the beginning of her session all about? Being in this void and not finding things. The lives, if any, aren't as important right now mm -hmm. to her experience. Okay. It, the void was mm, complete mm, surrender. Okay. So she was surrendering to this void? Mm. Okay, good. Now another thing she asked about is about the limiting beliefs and programming that she's acquired here in this lifetime. When we come to Earth, we're programmed a certain way with society. How can she release this fear, this programming? Trust. Trust. Are we saying trust in that inner voice? Trust in herself mm -hmm. and that if she is called to do something, to do it whether she feels the fear or not. Mm. Mm. Now in some of these things, at work for example, she doesn't really handle authority very well. Are we saying that she needs to face this? To do it anyway? Or is this something else? To trust in herself and not be influenced by the outside. Okay. Because the outside has certain programs to keep you down, mm -hmm. to keep you limited. Okay. To keep you influenced, in, be easily influenced. Mm-hmm. So really work, look within, trust in yourself. The authority is also being controlled. Mm. So if you, if she's trusting in herself, then she can't be under the influence of the authority. Mm -hmm. So she needs to be her own authority? Okay. So how can she work in a normal job? and deal with authority, or will she just be working on her own in the future? She'll be working on her own in okay. the future. Okay, so right now, just learn and start doing things on her own? Just smile and nod. <laughs> Is that what we should all be doing? Mm. Yes. Good. What kind of work should she, she be focusing on 
Healing people. Healing. In what way does she heal? Because right now she's doing the yoga. She's doing coaching. Mm. Are there other alternatives that she should be looking at? Just be with people. Touch them. Mm -hmm. Touch the people. Does she have healing power in her hands? Yes. Okay. So in whatever way she can to get her hands on people would be good. Okay. And this Reiki that she was taught on the beach, is this something that she should be mindful of when she touches people? Mm-hmm. Okay. Good. Well, she wants to work at her highest capability. Is working by herself or on her own, is this the way to go for her to be working at the highest? Okay. Yeah. Um... I think yeah. she wanted more f more of a, a focused answer on that one. S sound healing also. Sound healing, okay. Mm. Should she be working with adults, with children? Both? Both, okay. Because she noticed that when she was working with children, they already were programmed mm -hmm. a certain way. Will she be able to influence them? She makes them feel free again. Okay. She lets them be free. Okay, good. And why is it that she gets so bored doing and working with the same thing for a long period of time? She needs stimulation. Mm -hmm. She feels sometimes mundane. But this connection mm -hmm. to a higher source is uplifting and revitalizes her. Mm -hmm. Isn't it true that once you're connected with a divine, that that alone is stimulation? That the mundane becomes fun? Yes. Mm -hmm. So we should really be focusing on that to stimulate us, mm -hmm. not the actual task itself. Yes. It should come from within. Yes. Okay, good. Does she understand that? Is she, would she be able to implement that? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Do you have any other tips or advice for her spiritually or career-wise? Keep your heart open. Mm -hmm. Now, when we keep our heart open, sometimes we deal with relationships. And she wants to know why she has chosen to find her partner at this time. He's free. Mm-hmm. Is that why she's attracted to him? His freedom? Mm -hmm. Is he part of her soul group? Have they known each other before? Where do they know each other from before? Other lifetimes. Other lifetimes. Can you show her a picture? Flashcards of these lifetimes so that she can get an idea of where they've known each other from before. If we show her images, she'll be too attached to them. Okay. So leave it as that. They've known each other. Well, would it be safe, valuable, and beneficial for her to love more than one person romantically? But she's been looking into open relationships. She's breaking paradigms. Mm -hmm. Her heart needs to be free as well. Mm -hmm. It can't be held within one space. And she's very physical, so... Mm -hmm. <laughs> it can include physical intimacy. Mm -hmm. But she... it needs to be... 
in cooperation with with the most aligned it has to be healthy mm -hmm. it can't be something just based on lust mm. it has to be based on the heart okay now in these connections that she's made are they heart-based connections yes okay so she asks a question about why is it that her sexual connection and desire has faded She's looking for something deeper. Mm. Is that something that happens with people who have taken a spiritual path? Yeah. We have certain ways in which we think that sexual intimacy should look mm -hmm. or feel or be. But there can be something much uh, of much more value energetically through those exchanges that are not depleting but rather nourishing and nurturing to the body mm -hmm. bringing the energetics of the body back into proper alignment so she's tired of just the action mm -hmm. And there's no, she doesn't find value in it anymore mm -hmm. because she's deprogramming. Okay. So. Does this have anything to do also with the way that our bodies are vibrating differently? Yes. Mm -hmm. And the energetic exchange that you have through these intimate connections, mm, it's more about the energetic exchange mm -hmm. rather than the, the physical. physical. Mm -hmm. So you're actually having an intimate relationship soul to soul. Yeah. Okay. So that's more satisfying than the the uh, physical yes okay good is that something she'll understand yes okay will her sexual sexuality ever been be activated again if she finds the right relationship it's still active mm -hmm. it's just that she needs to hold the energetic space that she wants to create mm -hmm. okay so if the purpose of that exchange is to be energetic she needs to hold that space first okay. and not allow it to be brought down to just the physical okay good and she asks about her immediate family she wants to know if they're part of her soul group did they come here together or is she on her own they're very connected mm -hmm. where are they from Are they part of the same Pleiadian family or are they just soul connections? Soul. Okay. Soul connections. Very good. Very good. Now, health questions. Would you do a body scan and let's see what's going on with her body? She's feeling a little cramp in her heart right now. Mm -hmm. What's causing that cramp in her heart? Mm. Let's go in and find the origin of that. Mm. Some darkness there. Darkness there. Would you allow me to address this darkness and see if we can assist today? Very mm. good. All right, so I'm going to take my hand over her heart and bring it up, 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 up. Good morning. Are you male or female energy? Male. Male. What may I call you today? 
John. John. John, how old are you? 30. 30. And what year is it for you, John? Mm, 61. 1961. 1961. And John, how did you lose your body in 1961? What happened to you? Mm. Shot in the heart. You shot in the heart. Who shot you, John? A gang. A gang. Were you part of this gang, John? Mm-hmm. Mm. So who's the one that shot you? Did you know him? Friend. Your friend. So your own friend killed you? Mm-hmm. John, after you left that body that had been shot, where did you go? Did you go home to the light? No. No. Why did you hang out here, John? Were you afraid? I wanted to feel love. Mm -hmm. So how did you find Carla? How old was she? Twelve. Twelve. What was going on in her life that made her vulnerable to you? Her own friends betrayed her. Mm. So you had something in common, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You were feeling betrayed, and so was she. Mm. So what have you been causing, Carla, all of this time? Lack of trust, suspicion. Mm -hmm. What else? Anxiety. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Closing off. Mm -hmm. In relationships? And from people. Mm -hmm. New people. Yes. Well, it seems to me, John, that you've been doing the opposite of what you were looking for. For someone looking for love, you've actually gone deeper mm -hmm. and kind of run away from it, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you want to finally feel love, John? Would you like me to help you today? Yeah. All right. So, John, you may not have noticed this, but there's a spark of light within you. Look for it and tell me when you find it. Mm -hmm. This spark of light comes from Source, Creator, God, Mother, Father. And this is where you came from. This is where pure love is. I want you to make that light bigger and bigger, John. Make it so big that it takes over your entire essence. And tell me how that feels. Light. Light. Keep expanding it more and more. Make that light as big as the planet. Tell me how it feels. Expansive. Mm-hmm. Can you feel the love now, John? Yes. You are now connected to Source to your own mother, father. Do you need to be in Carla's body now that you are so big and bright and loving? No. no. All right. So John, I'd like for you to go ahead and begin removing your energy from her body. Allow that energy to just flow out of her body. You can go right up to the crown of her head right here. Pull all of that darkness out. And now that you're so full of light and so powerful, John, I'd like for you to go ahead and beam in a ray of that beautiful light and love into her heart. Feel what it feels like to be so loving yourself. How does that feel, John? Easy. Mm hmm and now, John, I'd like for you to find your body 
the body that was shot. Find that body now and tell me what it looks like. Inform. All right, so now I'd like for you to go ahead and send that same love and energy into that body, healing that body from head to toe. And tell me what it feels like to be able to heal your body. Revitalizing. Mm -hmm. Very good. So, John, are you ready to go back home? Yeah. Very good. What would you like to tell Carla? I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Take a deep breath in. Carla, what would you like to tell John? Do you forgive him for this? I forgive you. Mm -hmm. So send him off with your own love now. And John Archangel Michael is right here waiting for you. And the angels of the white light will surround you and take you home. So take him by the hand and tell me when you get home, John. Very good. Who's there to greet you? My family. Very good. May the light of the universe always accompany you, John. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now let me take you back to your higher self. Take a deep breath in and let's find out how your heart looks now. Very good. Good. Very good. So let's continue with the scan and let me know what else you find. What else is going on with Carla's body? There's a lot of tension built up in the left side in the back. Mm -hmm. What's causing that tension? Is she creating that? Yeah. All right, so let's find out the origin of that tension. I'd like for you to take her back to the origin of when she created that tension. In school. Mm -hmm. What was happening in school that created that? She felt imprisoned. Mm -hmm. How old was she when she created that tension? Mm, 20 mm -hmm. something, 22. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does she need to hold on to that tension anymore? Mm. No. What is it benefiting her to keep her tense like this? She loses connection to her body sometimes. Mm -hmm. She wants to be up. Mm -hmm. Does she need to do it with tension? No, she just needs to take time to ground herself mm -hmm. during every day. You could do something in nature to ground yourself. Okay. And then the physical body doesn't have to produce symptoms to ground you. Okay. What are the other symptoms that she's feeling besides that? Besides this tension that's reminding her to ground herself? Hmm. Is her fatigue being tired? She is integrating with the tiredness. Mm -hmm. She needs time to just be. Okay. Is that why she's been so tired? Mm hmm Okay. She doesn't allow herself to stop, so she gets tired instead so that she can stop. Okay. So that's her way mm -hmm. of telling her to stop? Yes. Will that continue? Or can you talk to her now? And maybe slap her upside the head and tell her to relax. Yeah, if she, she she needs to either make the conscious choice to to slow down, mm -hmm. or she'll just keep getting tired and need to take naps okay. to be able to integrate that good new light energy. Good. So getting back to the tension, can we begin releasing that tension now? Can we begin transforming that into something else? Yes. What can we transform that into? Softness. All right, so let's go ahead and tell her what you're using to transform it. Mm, white light. Wonderful. Let me know when you're, you're completed. Hmm. It's being worked on. 
Wonderful. Can I continue while you work on that? Yeah. Thank you. So what else have you found in her body? Looks good? Looks okay. Good. So she has questions about particular things that she's going through. Perhaps the higher self doesn't find them as interesting as she does, but she's questioning about her scoliosis. Why does she have that? Yeah, it keeps her connected to her body. <laughs> ah. Does she choose to have this? Uh, yeah. Does she need to have this? now that she does yoga and understands it? Why did she choose this? All of the painful experiences have shown her, brought her deeper into herself. Yeah, her physical body if she didn't have, if her physical body didn't have pain or imbalance, then she probably wouldn't give it the attention. Mm. So she wouldn't have done the yoga. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But now that she does the yoga, does she need to keep being reminded of this? Is this something that she chose as a lifelong lesson? Or can she release it? She can live with the curvature in her spine, mm -hmm. but with the pain, mm -hmm. she doesn't need to experience the pain, but the pain is there to bring her back. Okay. So if she goes out and goes away, she has, she has to come back okay. into the body. Can she accept that as something that she chose? Yeah, she already knew. Mm -hmm. And now that we have the information on the scoliosis, what's going on with her right eye? Why the infection? She wasn't seeing her reality. Mm -hmm with a clear perspective. How about now? She's seeing more clearly now. Mm -hmm. Can we go in there and do complete healing on her eye? Mm -hmm. Very good. I'd like to ask the higher self and Archangel Raphael the healer to begin working now on healing completely her eye now that she understands why and what's been going on with her skin especially on her hands it's so sensitive lately she's allergic to the chemicals to the chemicals so what does she need to be using instead natural natural has she been changing to that yes okay and what about her hormones? She wants to know if they're in balance. They're getting there. Mm -hmm. It took a long, it's taking a long time to detox from oh. all of those contraceptives. Okay. And why is it that she was getting the fibroids? Grounding. Grounding. It was grounding her? Mm, awareness to ground. Okay. Does she have the fibroids still? They're benign. Okay. 
Can we begin zapping them now if she, if they're not needed? Mm -hmm. All right. So I'd like for you to tell her what color light you're using. Golden light. Beautiful. Let me know when you're done. Mm -hmm. Done. Very good. So do you see anything else in her body that needs attention today? Oh, very good. Now I'd like to ask you why you brought Carla here to this session today. What did you want to tell her? That everything she needs to know, she's all inside of her. Mm -hmm. And how is her connection with you, her higher self? Every day. Every day. Would you explain to her in your words what you as her higher self are? The part of her consciousness that isn't altered by this time space. Okay. Is she able to connect to any lifetime that she's lived before? to gather information through the higher self. Mm. Or is she focused on this one only? Uh, I mean, she's an old soul. Mm -hmm. But um, those lives don't matter. Okay, good, good. Anything else that you would like to tell Carla here today before we finish? Help. Listen. You know what you have to do. The external won't give you validation. You need to validate yourself. Keep your heart open. And you are so loved. Very good. Are we complete today? Thank you. Thank you, Alma. Welcome back. Mm, thank you. You did great. Mm, How do you feel? I feel good. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Got all your answers, huh? Yeah. How does your body feel? Feels rested. Yeah? Mm hmm. Any shifting, any moving around there? Yeah. There was like that tightness yeah. there. Mm -hmm. so you can see where he was shot, huh? Yeah. That's what he was reflecting on to you. Mm. Pretty cool. Yeah, that makes sense why I was not able to like trust. Mm -hmm. You went through, he was betrayed. Yeah. So he didn't want you feeling betrayed too. Mm -hmm. So he was projecting everything onto you. Uh, you want to keep this personal? I don't need to. No? You can yeah. share it? Yeah. Good. Good. You're welcome. You're welcome. You did great. So, how did it feel? felt very relaxing. Mm -hmm. um, and... Now, mm. now, the beginning, at the beginning, Yeah. I know that you were... Kind of like, oh, I'm not getting this. I'm yeah, not I was getting this. fighting my conscious so, mind. So like, tell everybody how it felt to, to be in that position where you're like, I don't see anything. I don't feel anything. I'm thinking I'm making this all up. Yeah, you just have to trust that mm -hmm. whatever is coming up in your imagination mm -hmm. um, is um, something for you to be mm -hmm. 
paying attention to yeah. and experiencing. Now, it was really interesting. There was a shift there when all of a sudden it was like, oh, I'm actually seeing this stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay, when you were at the Pleiades. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, but I'm a man. It's always like the emotions came in and it's like, oh, this is like, you yeah. know, there was a shift there. It was the, Something happened. the sense of responsibility when I got back to my home. Yeah. And I was, and it felt very much um, like a male responsibility. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And really, that's how I felt male. Yes. Um, was because of that. Because I think that they they already have a naturally more feminine energy, mm. uh, more receptive energy. Okay. So that's why I didn't really know. I think that it was male at first. But you felt yourself that you were blue. Blue, yeah. Well, I looked down. You said look down at your feet, and I was going to say my toenails were painted blue. <laughs> and I was like, how would my toenails be painted? Like, and then I just stayed with the color blue, and yeah. then I felt. It was more. It's more like you're feeling images, yes. or at least for exactly. Me. Yeah, and everybody's different. Mm-hmm. Everybody's different, but you have to go with that feeling, uh, because what is coming up is what's being given to you. Yeah, and one of the things is you. You, you know, people say, "Well, I think I'm making this all up," and mm-hmm. really, who's giving you this information? It's your higher self, right? So. A lot of people will say, well, that was just me making it up. Well, yeah, but your higher self brought you here. Your higher self is giving you this stuff. So go go with it go because with that's it. the images that that you're being fed. Mm-hmm. And then what was really interesting is that when your higher self said something about, well, past lives are, impo- are important for you. Yeah. You know? I think I, I, mean, like I would get too attached. Mm-hmm. I think that... It would distract me, I yeah. think, from this life. Yeah. Um, even though I am curious about it, um, I understand that because I, I have mm-hmm. that tendency to. So, get what did it feel like to channel your higher self? Felt like I do it every day. You do. Because I felt a lot of the information I had already mm-hmm. thought about or yeah um, felt before. And so it's like, it's really a confirmation, validating, like, mm-hmm. it was like, don't validate from the external, but <laughs> um, it was validating yeah. in terms of just trusting myself, because yeah. sometimes I don't do that. Mm. So what would you recommend people do if they're coming to a session? How, how would you prepare for this? Mm. What do you think? Get uh, meditate. Mm-hmm. Um, probably doing hypnosis before would help, mm-hmm. just so that you know, like your own self hypnosis type yeah, of thing. Yeah, I've never done hypnosis, but um, mm-hmm. I do a lot of deep meditations. Mm. Does so that help? I think that helps. Yeah, um, being like feeling really soft in your body, just focusing on relaxing all parts of your body, doing your visualization exercise because you go through all of that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, And maybe eating a little bit lighter Mm -hmm. for, you know, like a month before. And and you're a yoga instructor and you were being told basically that you need to touch people. I need to touch people. Yeah. And I do, um, at the end of my class, I... um, um, I like waft a little bit of lavender like this mm-hmm. and then I do a little temple massage and a mm-hmm. push on the shoulders and everyone says they wake up from their shavasana like they feel like <laughs> they've done a massage or something <laughs> they've gone to the spa and I've only touched them just for a few seconds yeah. you know so I think that probably makes sense wonderful yeah. and uh, another uh, startling thing was um, Gaia your connection with Gaia mm. and you saw some mm-hmm. things there yeah, stone, stone. The stone structures. Structures, they they have these stone structures already. They're just mm-hmm. not. Um, we're not using them mm-hmm. actively, consciously, and the stones have crystals within them, mm-hmm. so they're conscious. Yes, they have power. <laughs> um, they have power and energy, conduct conductive energy. So we just got to get back to nature. Yeah. And it's not that we're going to be uncivilized or anything like that. It's actually if you think about it, it's a higher technology um to use mm-hmm. nature. Yeah. Yeah. Um Yeah. Good. Good. How did you feel about Miami? 
So then I remembered that I had that dream. Mm-hmm. Um, Do you feel like you can trust your intuition that your higher self will tell you when you need when to? When it's time to go. Yeah. Do you feel yeah. now that you have that connection that you can trust? Yeah. Yeah. I do too. And and, and it's, it's more like for other people too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking you have to like, trust yourself. Yeah. Don't, don't, the, the thing is that you can't be listening to what other people tell you. You can't be running around like a chicken without mm. your head. You have to trust when it's time to do something. So if it's time to, you know, move on to a different place, you move on. If you trust that you have to be here, you be here. Mm -hmm. You know, you really have to trust your own in intuition. So it's not like, you know, these sessions, when I post them out there, it's for you to really go within. It's not for you to say, oh, well, uh, I heard this from this person. You have to trust with your own, your own intuition. Yes. Good. So if you would like a session with me, just go to my website, albaweinman.com. I'm booked way out into the future, but I do travel all around the world. So you can go to my, my uh, out-of-town page on my website, and there is a section there to sign up for my newsletter. And that newsletter will tell you where I'm going to next. It'll also tell you when my Miami calendar is open again. <laughs> It'll get you news. So um, I hope I get to see you, and I hope you enjoyed this session. I did. And I know I did. Carla Thank did you too. So oh, much, Alvin. You're welcome. You're wonderful.